Hello everyone, welcome back to Arpita's Tech Corner. In this video, we are going to know about some DAX related question. Now, uh, you have practiced and studied a lot, but still before going to the interview, you're thinking about what could be the questions related to this DAX. And I've observed there are many Power BI jobs where in the job description, they have mentioned about this DAX. So that means they are concentrating on this DAX topic. Now, uh, I'm not saying that these are all the obvious questions, but based on my experience, I've tried to find out some possible question and answers. Okay. So from an interviewer perspective, maybe I will ask this type of questions. Let's jump into some questions. First, I'll start with some basic questions. Okay, let's proceed. Our first question could be, what is DAX? You know, we have practiced a lot, but some of the time we are not able to remember what is the full form of DAX and what is DAX. What could be the answer? The acronym of DAX is Data Analysis Expression. If someone is new to this Power BI job, so he can go through this type of questions. And it is known as a functional language. It means calculation mostly use functions to generate the results and it is also called an expression language. So I've just tried to create this answer point wise so that you can remember these things. Next question, why are you using DAX or what is the purpose of this DAX? DAX is designed for enhancing data modeling, reporting and analytics capability. Just remember this three point data modeling, reporting and analytics capability. DAX helps to get more insights into your data that you would not otherwise be able to get. You can give some example, this time intelligence capability. Are there specific data types for DAX? This could be an important question, okay? Yes, some data types are supported by DAX. So there are seven types whole number, decimal number, boolean, text, date, currency, and blank. Okay. Next question. Is it possible to define data type in DAX? Is there any benefit to do that? Yes, it is possible to define the data type for each column based on the requirement. And selecting the best data type helps reduce the size of a data model and improves the performance when refreshing data and the use of any report. Just try to remember these important points. Reduce the size of a data model and improves the performance. You know, you don't need to remember each and every sentence before going to the interview, okay? You can create your sentences, but try to remember some keywords. Okay, that's the objective of this video. What is the next question? How many types of operators are we using in DAX? Four categories of DAX operator. Comparison, arithmetic, text, and logical. How many function categories are there in DAX? As per the Microsoft documentation, there are 14 types of function categories. There could be some new categories. Just go through the Microsoft documentation first before going to the interview, okay? So out of that, mostly we are using the nine function categories. Date and time, time intelligence, information, logical, mathematical, statistical, text, parent-child and other, okay? Just try to remember some of the categories. Maybe in the interview, they are going to ask you, okay, give me some example. What are the function categories you have worked? Okay. Are you following any data model concept when you are writing DAX function? If yes, do you know how many components are there? Yes, the DAX function supports a data model concept. You know, whenever they are going to ask this type of questions like, are you following any data model concept when you are writing a DAX function? Don't finish that question with only yes what. Don't do that. Try to complete the full sentence, okay? Yes, the DAX function supports a data model concept. Just like one data model, it has data, tables, 
columns, relationships, measures and hierarchies. And the third point is, as you know, a data model consists of data, calculation and formatting rules and it combines to create an object. So this object helps to explore and understand the data sets. Okay, so there could be a different type of questions based on this many components or this data model concept in DAX. Okay, just try to remember the keywords. Okay, do you know about M? Is there any difference between M and DAX? I have seen this is one of the most common asked questions M and DAX. Yes, in Power Query, we are writing the script which is known as M language or Power Query formula language. There is some difference between M and DAX. M language is normally used for data transformation, which is ETL. Okay, whereas DAX is used for data analyzing purposes, which means using different DAX functions, we can analyze data more effectively. Just try to remember this last point, okay? How do you know in which scenario we need to use M or DAX? And there could be some alternate question like, can we explain some scenario where you need to use M or DAX? How do you decide, okay? So both languages are valued based on their uses. For example, if I want to create like, just try to remember whenever you are giving some answer, try to use the word I, don't use we, okay? Just use I want to create one flag column based on some existing column values. Then I can create it in Power Query Editor using M. Here I'm transforming the data. And you know, they can ask you, can you create the same flag in DAX also? Yes, you can. But based on the scenario, we have to decide it. Now we can give another example related to DAX. Here I have used we word, but in your interview, try to remember always use I. Let's consider another example where I want to provide a year on year or month on month analysis. In this case, DAX is ideal because it has time intelligence functions for implementing this. So after analyzing the requirements, I can decide the best way to implement them. Try to remember some scenario. It could be different scenario for you. So I've just tried to give some example so that it will be readily available to you. If you have any other example, definitely go for that, but try to remember the keywords. Now, whenever you are giving answer to this comparison type of interview questions, so try to remember to give some example so that you can describe the process properly and methodically and as well as answer will be readily available to the interviewer okay now the next question what is DAX variable in DAX calculation we can use variables to make the calculation easier to understand when you are writing any complex or nested expression using DAX function variables can help to break this complex calculation into smaller, more useful sections. So what is the key point? The key point is why we are using the DAX variable to break the complex expression into smaller and more useful sections. So these are some keywords to answer this question. Next question, why do we need the DAX variable? I have already explained some of the things, but go some point wise answer. There are main four reasons to use DAX variables. Reduce complexity, easy to debug, improve readability, improve performance. So whenever you are giving answer to this question, just try to remember these four points. Now give an example of a variable is it. I have one blog and video in my YouTube channel. So you can go through that video and try to find out some example. Also. I would recommend from your project experience, if you have any example, just try to explain that scenario. Now, question number 13. Tell me about the context concept in DAX. That is a, one of the important area which I found it's mostly asked in many interviews. How many types of context are there? In DAX, 
Context is the layer of filtering and is applied to calculations to produce a result related to every value of a visual or pivot table including rows and columns totals. So by definition, context is an important concept for building high performing dynamic analysis and for troubleshooting problems in formulas. Just try to remember the keywords. Don't try to memorize these sentences. Okay. How many types of contexts are there? There are three types. Filter, row and query. Now what do you mean by filter context in DAX? And how many types of filter context are there? So go one by one. When we are applying filters on the set of values of columns or tables using DAX calculation that is known as filter context. And there are two types of filter context, implicit and explicit. How does filter context work in a DAX expression? This could be an important question. Before executing the core expression, the filter context will finalize. Once it is decided, filter rules that means inside the context are applied across the data and calculations execute on the remaining data. Okay, so first filter context will finalize, then it will apply across the data, then the calculation execute. Go step by step. In a DAX expression, which one will execute first? Filter context or row context. Filter context applies on top of other contexts such as row context or query context. Difference between implicit and explicit filter context. That is also an important question. When in the DAX calculation, you have not declared filters explicitly. So the value will be different based on any dimension field selection. This is the effect of the DAX implicit filter context. Explicit filter context means in calculation where specifically adds or removes column filter rules to and from the filter context. Okay, so this is implicit, this is explicit. What do you mean by row context? Row context is related to current rows. Just try to remember point wise answers. If you create a calculation using the calculated column, the row context involves the values of all columns from the current row. If that table has a relationship with the other table, then it includes all the related values from the other table for that row. Next question, what is query context? The combination of row and filters create the final query for DAX. So you can define this is a query context. Users explicitly mention row and filter context for DAX and DAX implicitly creates the query context from that filter and row context. So if you have any doubt, just go to my YouTube channel and from the DAX tutorial, you can find out this video where I have explained also go to the description section where you can find out the working file as well as the blog details. Next question, will tax relationships work for many to many relationships? No, tax relationships work only for the one to one and one to many relationships. Self joins that means a table joins back with itself cannot be possible. I feel this is also an important question. For the tax relationships, can we work with the composite key? No. In this situation, where multiple columns are responsible for data uniqueness, we need to create a new column with the combination of multiple columns and use it for relationships. And the 23rd question, how DAX will work without a standard relationship? Or how will you join two tables without any standard relationship between them? That means there is no relationship, but how will you join? 
we can use different DAX function to solve this problem. Cross join, generate, natural inner join, natural left outer join, union, accept, intercept. So these are all some functions. If you need some example, go to my YouTube channel where I have explained all the examples related to these functions. Okay. So in this video, you came to know about some 23 questions. In my next video, I will come up with some other questions. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, comment and share with your friend. Thank you. Thanks for watching.